This is Unit 5, Lesson 1, The Distributive Property. Let's talk for a minute about order of operations versus the distributive property. If we take a look at the expression on the left, we would do order of operations by doing what's inside the parentheses first. So I would first add 3 plus 4 and get 7, and then I would multiply 2 times 7 and get 14. But there's another way we could do this using what's called the distributive property. You can see that the 2 is right up next to that parenthesis, so that means we're going to multiply 2 times everything inside. And we did that before. After we added the 3 and 4 and made a 7, we multiplied by the 2. But we could also think of it as multiplying 2 by all the things inside, even before we add the 3 and 4 together. So you can see that the 2 needs to be multiplying by, on, by the 3. So I could write 2 times 3. And there's also a 4 inside those parentheses, so we want to also be multiplying the 2 by the 4. So if I had to multiply 2 times 3, I would get 6. 2 times 4, I would get 8. And if I added those together, I would get 14. So you can see that the distributive property, when I follow the procedure like I just described, gives the same result as doing the order of operations the normal way that we know. So why would I do it this second way? Well, I wouldn't if it ended up looking like this. But we use the idea of the distributive property in situations where we have numbers and values and uh, variables inside our parentheses that we actually can't combine. So we can't combine an x and a 2. Uh, and so we are going to use the distributive property to simplify that expression. So it's important to understand that an expression is considered simplified if there's no grouping symbols left in it. So to be able to simplify this, I would need to complete what's inside the parentheses, but we see we can't do that because we can't subtract 2 from an x. So we're going to use the distributive property and say, hey, I'm going to multiply 3 times all the stuff inside. So I'm going to first say, okay, I'm going to multiply the 3 times the x. And if I had 1x, and I said we wanted to do that three times, that would be three x's, so I would write three x. And then also inside is a negative two. So if I were to multiply three times negative two, I would get negative six, so I'm going to write it as negative six. So three times the quantity x minus two is equivalent to three x minus six, and I got that using the distributive property. All right, let's try another one. Negative three times x minus 2. Well, here what we're distributing is the value that's right up against the parentheses. It's a negative 3. So if I were to distribute negative 3 and multiply it by everything inside, I would have to first multiply it by an x. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And then negative 3 times negative 2, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, so I would write plus 6. So now I've simplified that expression because I have done the operation to remove any grouping symbols. All right, next one, if my pen cooperates. Oh, there we go. All right, example three, it doesn't matter what's inside the parentheses. If we've got a situation where there's a number right up against the parentheses, it means that number multiplied by every single thing inside. And we can see that there are three terms inside the parentheses, because if you recall, terms are separated by adding and subtracting. Now, it might be helpful for you to identify each thing, each term inside the parentheses, and it might, for some people, be helpful to circle them. So the first term inside the parentheses is 6a, and the second term is negative 2b, because you've got to remember that that adding or subtracting goes with what comes after it. And the third term is plus 11, positive 11. So now I'm going to distribute. Let's change to purple. So what I'm going to do is multiply 5 times those three terms. So 5 times 6a. Hmm, what would that be? Well, what we're saying is we have 6a's, but I want those five times. So 6a and 6a and 6a and 6a and 6a and 6a, I think that's five times, would end up being 30a's because 5 times 6 is 30, and so that's the quantity of a's that we have. So 5 times 6a is 30a. You can see we've just multiplied the number times the uh, coefficient, 
and nothing's happened to the A because our coefficient again is a description of quantity. There are six A's and then we said we're going to take five, five times that. Now we're going to multiply five times negative two B. We're just going to multiply the five times the coefficient negative two. Five times negative two is negative 10. So we have negative 10 B and then five times 11 is 55. So I'm going to put plus 55. So you can see that I very carefully put arrows going from what I'm multiplying to each term inside the parentheses, and that helps me keep track of what I'm doing. All right, now sometimes you might get a problem where you've got your expression and then it's multiplied by a number at the end. Well, this is going to distribute in the same way. But for a lot of people, it's helpful to write it first. So we're going to take this negative 3 over here and we're going to rewrite the negative 3 at the beginning and then rewrite our parentheses 2x minus 5 minus 6y. For some people, visually, it's helpful to have the single value that's being multiplied uh, written at the beginning. It's just helpful to see that. You don't have to do that. You could kind of distribute backwards, but that's helpful for a lot of people. So I'm going to now use a different color so you can see clearly what I'm doing. I'm now going to distribute negative 3. So I'm going to say negative 3 times 2x. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6x. Now, negative 3 times negative 5 I'm not sure why that straight line keeps happening. It's slightly annoying. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. So for those of you that are still a little shaky with your integer uh, multiplication, you're going to have to get some control over that so that you don't get the problems wrong just because of the integer part. All right. Now negative 3 times negative 6y. Negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18. So we have positive 18y. Now, one thing that we like to do is we like to order the terms in alphabetical order and put the constant at the end. So you can see I have a negative 6x, and I'm going to keep that first, but then I'm going to rearrange and take my 18y and put that next. Plus, notice that's a positive 18y, so I'm going to write plus 18y. And then I'm going to take my 15 and put that at the end, my plus 15. So I've just rearranged it. Um, rewriting the same terms but in a different order so that they're alphabetical. All right, now this one looks a little bit strange, but what we're distributing seems to be a negative sign. Well, we can think of that, if there's no number there, we can think of it as a negative 1. So really what we're distributing is negative 1. I'm going to make it look a little bit more like a 1. All right, so we need to distribute negative 1 times all the things inside. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. Negative 1 times x, well, this is like a 1x, and negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So we would have negative 1x. But we don't really like to write the 1 there. It's more simplified if we don't write the 1. So we're going to write negative x. And then negative 1 times negative 5y is plus 5y. So now take a look. It's interesting. What happened when we were distributing the negative or the negative 1 is that the sign of every term inside switched to its opposite. So 7 became negative 7, x became negative x, negative 5y became positive 5y. So some of you might recognize that that's the pattern and just do that straight off very easily. Now we want to write this and rearrange the order so that it's alphabetical. And so I'm looking at my x term, and what's really important to notice is that the x is a negative x, because that negative is coming ahead of it. So when I arrange, rearrange it, I need to put the negative of that x ahead, uh, um, include the negative when I'm putting that negative x first. And then what comes next is a positive 5y. So I'm going to write plus 5y. And then what's left over is the negative 7. That's my constant. So I'm going to write that at the end, negative 7. So it's really important to understand that the, the sign comes uh, to the left or before the term, and that that needs to be moved with it when you rearrange to have it in alphabetical order.
All right, now sometimes we have to distribute fractions. We can handle that. You guys can handle fractions. So I'm going to first multiply 2 thirds times 6a. So we just need to focus on multiplying 2 thirds times 6. And if it helps you, you can do it over to the side. 2 thirds times 6. And I'm going to make it 6 over 1 to make my life a little bit easier. And then if you want to, you can cross simplify because that's very helpful. So I'm going to divide by 3 and get 1, divide by 3 and get 2, and 2 times 2 is 4 over 1, which is 4. So I know that my answer to 2 thirds times 6a is 4a. And then I'm going to distribute, let's change back colors again. 2 thirds times 3 eighths b. So I'm going to say, okay, I've got to multiply 2 thirds times 3 eighths. I'm going to do that one. I'm going to cross cancel again. 3 and 3 cancel each other out and make 1. And then if I divide 2 and 8, I'm going to divide by 2 and get 1 and divide by 2 and get 4. So when I multiply that, I get 1 fourth. So I'm going to write that as the coefficient of the b. So it's positive, so I'm going to write plus one fourth b, and that's okay to have it as a fractional coefficient. And then, changing back to my colors again, I'm going to say two thirds times negative one half. So I need to do two thirds times negative one half. Now, I know that a positive times a negative makes a negative. So I'm just going to go and read, write my negative in right away before I even get my number. Now I'm going to cross simplify, dividing by 2 and dividing by 2. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. And so now I'm going to say 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 1 is 3, and so it's negative 1 third. So I'm left with negative 1 third. All right, that's it. Now, if any of this was confusing, don't forget that you can just simply rewatch the video. Watch it again. Make sure when you've taken your notes that you've written down everything that I've written down as an example of how to do it, including the arrows. I think the arrows and the circling can be very helpful. Um, if you feel comfortable, go ahead and put your note sheet in your binder and get ready for some practice tomorrow. Uh, if you're still a little shaky, rewatch the video. I will see you tomorrow.